Ritholtz Wealth Management. Um, I'm crying. What's your? I have tears in my eyes. What is your assessment here now? Of what does this mean for stocks moving forward? Let's just take it from there. Uh, some stocks are overvalued, but on the whole, the asset class, not overvalued. I, that's the only thing I just, Jeff, Jeff just spoke for 30 minutes. The only thing I disagree with him, the blanket statement that stocks are overvalued. You can buy small caps for 12 times forward earnings. You can buy mid caps for 13 or 14 times forward earnings. You can buy large cap basic materials nine times earnings. I, I feel like there is a lot you could be doing away from the uh, S&P 50 most of which are tech, consumer discretionary. There's a lot you could be doing where you are not overpaying for stocks, especially if you want to take the Fed at their word that we're going into a cutting cycle. I just, I categorically disagree. Money markets were the trade of the year. Uh, $6 trillion in money markets right now. We don't need it all, quote unquote, all to go into stocks. If any meaningful portion of that $6 trillion goes into stocks, doesn't have to go into the SPY ETF. It can go into dividend aristocrats. Look at them. Uh, NOB, uh, uh, NOBL. Uh, look, look, look at the way they're treating the VIG, VIG, Vanguard uh, dividend. This is where the money is flowing right now because everybody understands this. You could buy stocks without buying the seven stocks. And that's the trade right now. I think that trade carries us through. I have tears in my eyes. This is like the end of a romantic comedy. Everything fell into place. We're going out. We're going out with a VIX at 12. What else do you want? We have vanquished. We have, who's laughing? Liz? I will see you in a minute. We, we have vanquished. 9% inflation. We did it. We did it without a single person losing a job. Please, please understand that. We just printed plus 199,000 new jobs last month, and the war on inflation has been won. VIX at 12, stocks cheap enough to buy. Um, all of the most widely held stocks in America having massive double digits, in some cases, triple digit rallies off the lows. Plus, we averted a potential banking crisis. What else could you have asked for out of 2023? I don't know. I don't know. You make the argument that the, the bear case is, is firmly dead. No. At this point. No. The 2023 bear case is dead. The 2024 bear, bear case is still ahead of us. There are probably going to be reasons to be concerned. But right now, as we end the year, you think about all of the things that went bump in the night. All of the things that we focused on day after day that could go wrong, none of them went wrong. They still could. They haven't. That's the story of, by the way, the story of 2023, a lot of uh, conventional wisdom got turned on its ear once again. One of the big ones, I was talking with a housing market expert yesterday. You had Fed funds, essentially, uh, you had mortgage rate go from 6% in February to over 8%. It actually started from 2.6% two years ago. What did home builders do this year? All-time highs. F up 50% on the year. That's not supposed to happen. A lot of things that weren't supposed to happen. And the big story, the Fed was not supposed to be able to, quote, unquote, win the war on inflation without costing us any jobs and without throwing us into recession. Because as, as, as the Fed chair, and I thought this was interesting, too, and we didn't get to talk about it yet, in the news conference, he was discussing why, in, in his mind, the inflation that was caused in this cycle wasn't traditional. It wasn't caused by some out-of-control demand. It was caused, in many respects, by supply shocks. Sure, you can criticize the fact that they waited too long. Um, they were buying mortgage bonds when yields or when mortgage rates were, were low. Um, and you can criticize the government for piling on with a lot of the stimulus. But in many respects, maybe the reason why we're even having this conversation is because those things happened. And yeah. the reason why he can maybe declare victory at one of these next meetings um, is because better late than never, they were aggressive, they were quick, and now we're going to see what happens. So Jeff was quoting from Braveheart. I'll, I'll do my own. William Wallace said, uh, we all end up dead. It's just a question of how and why. Every bout with inflation ends up dead. It's just a question of how and why. The 1970s inflation paradigm was the wrong paradigm. I'm not the only person, obviously, that pointed this out, but I still think it's really an important lesson. The real paradigm to have focused on was post-World War II. We had tons of stimulus in the system. That's what was necessary for the, for the arming of the country and the world against uh, the Axis. 
that inflation took like 10 years to, to, to work itself out of the system. We had rising rates throughout the 1950s, and yet stocks were able to work, and we didn't really have any meaningful economic issue. That was the right paradigm. We had this massive burst of stimulus to make sure that society didn't tear itself apart and we told people to stay home. It worked. We actually did too much of it. But it was not this, it was not this uh, lingering issue in the way that it was when we had oil embargoes and the like. It was man-made. We created it, and we were able to allow enough time to go by for that inflation to moderate. And it's not fully out of the system, and people are still paying high prices for shelter, for health care. Auto insurance sucks. I get it. I'm not saying, like, everything's great considering how much worse things could have been in this fight to bring inflation down from nominal 9% back on the road to 2, it could have been way worse, clear, and it was.